Okay. The nice thing about chapter 5, or at least the first part of chapter 5, is that you do not need to remember chapter 6 for the first part of chapter 5. Eventually, you will need to know chapter 6. But for right now, um, we're going to do some grade 8 area calculations. Yeah, this is a history, le this is a history lesson. So if you're following along in your textbook, if you want to look in your text, it's under the section 5.1, Riemann sums is another. Why do I need two M's in sums? Riemann. Okay. So the, the formulas that we're going to use today are Mr. Up, this is a rectangle. Area is length times width. And the other formula we're going to use today is Mr. Up, this is a trapezoid. Um, do not talk to grade eights and nines this way about a trapezoid. Actually, you might be able to. Um, the area is the averages of the lengths times the width. Nobody's probably ever told you to think about it like that, but it's the averages of the lengths. B1 plus B2 divided by 2. times the width, when we call it height. Well, no, because the height is we define as the, the perpendicular distance between the bases. Okay, so it's not the slanty distance. Slanty. <laughs> Spring break. Bad English. Okay, so length times width. Okay. Um, Named after a mathematician by the name of Riemann. This is before Newton and Leibniz. So this is kind of, we're starting to find, what we're going to talk about today is we're going to have curves, we're going to have shapes, we're going to try and find the area under that curve or shape. Okay, so this is before we talked about derivatives and antiderivatives. We were just trying to, here's the shape. Somebody did this worky, <laughs> this, this force and distance shape in physics 11, right? and ask for the total work. Remember doing that? So your physics 11 teacher was really nice and used triangles and rectangles and you just added up the areas of it. So what happens if it's not just a triangle plus a rectangle plus a, another triangle? Right, so you gotta use this idea, these ideas. Okay, so a bit of a story time. The definite integral is an accumulator. It allows you to add up area. Um, the, we've done indefinite integrals. The indefinite integral of f of x dx is capital F of x. Well, for example, the antiderivative of 2x dx is x squared plus c because the derivative Am I recording here? If I started with capital F of X equals X squared plus C, its derivative is 2X. This whole idea was based on working backwards from differentiation. You have also applied the indefinite integral to, and used it to solve problems given the velocity or the acceleration of some initial conditions. So I call these differential equations. Differential equations. Capital F is just the antiderivative of little f. So suppose you start in a car and the velocity increases then levels off as shown in the velocity time graph below and I ask you how far you have traveled. I give you this curve and I ask you how far have you traveled. What I'm actually asking you to do is to find the area under the curve, okay? So if you flip the page, I'm going to leave my graph here, but or can you see? Oh, good. Well done, Mr. Good pagination. 
on mine not so much. Pagination, pagination. How far has the car traveled between 70 seconds and 100 seconds? Well, Mr. App, that shape is pretty much a rectangle. Would you agree to that statement? Pretty much. Exactly? No. Pretty much? Yes. So a good approximation of the area of that curve would be a length of 30 and a width of 60. Area, what? Okay, 59. It's an approximation. Stop it. A width of 30 and a length of 60. It's got an area of 180 square units. Or meter, feet. Feet, Mr. S. Um, feet, no. No, because we're going from feet per second back to feet. Yeah. Yes. Yes. 30 seconds times 60 feet per second. The seconds cancel you have to feet. Yes. Okay. How far is the car traveled between zero seconds and 30 seconds? Well, it gets to be a little bit trickier because it's not a rectangle anymore, is it? So, Mr. App, maybe we could approximate this shape with a triangle. It's got a base of 30. And a height of. <laughs> 53 and a half. Okay, I was going to say 60, but all right. It can be approximated with a base of 30 and a height of 60. Um, 90. What? Okay, well, fine. You want to make it 50? More like 53. How about, come on. 30 times 50 is 150. Half of 150 is 75 feet. So the process, is a, the process of evaluating a product in which one factor varies is called, again, is called a definite integral. The definite integral will give us the area under the curve. What we're actually doing, and here's, this is, I'm playing ahead. This is way far ahead. But the way we would write this in, at the end of chapter five is to do this. The area under the curve between thir zero and 30 is 75. The area between 70 and 100. That's why it's called a definite interval, because I'm telling you where I want you to find the area between. If I don't put the numbers there, it's indefinite because I'm not telling you where to find the area between. Make sense? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, graph the area y equals 2x on the grid below and calculate the area by counting squares. So yeah, we're in math eight. Y equals two X. So go through the curve. One, two, two, four, three, six, four, eight. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oops. I can't draw. Okay, find the area between x equals 1 and x equals 4. So I want you to find this area by counting squares. So pretend you're in a Math 8 class and you haven't learned the area formulas.
15 and a half ish because I mean I called that seven I really missed out that little bit there I was gonna call these two together to make 15 maybe 16 squares 15 and a half maybe 16 squares ish and then you have this big debate in your grade 8 class because the world explodes. What do you mean half a square? Oh my god. Arr, arr, arr. Well, I had 18.23, Mr. Rapp, because I used my ruler and measure. And, uh, and you're just like drilling holes in your head. Relieve the pressure. <laughs> get the grade 8s out. It's only 20 minutes left. Oh my god. Okay, anyways. Counting squares. Efficient? No. Can it give you a rough estimate? Sure. Okay. Another way, instead of counting squares, hey, Mr. App, this shape can be defined using the formula. It's a trapezoid. Yes. Yes. It's a trapezoid. It's a trapezoid. This shape is a trapezoid. So base one is um, two. The, okay, most kids remember trapezoids look like this. The desks in the library make trapezoids. But you got to remember that the sides don't actually have to, so that's also a trapezoid. So base one, base two, and height. So a half times base one. A rhombus is a Trapezoidal square, sure. No, it's parallelogram square. Yeah, it's pushed over square. So one, two, plus. Is it eight? Times three. So two plus eight is ten. Half of ten is five. Five times three is fifteen. So the correct answer is 15. Well, I suck, okay? Okay. So graph y equals point, negative point two x squared eight on the grid below and find the area by counting squares. So it goes through the point zero eight. What else? One seven point eight. Two seven point two. Yep. Three six point two. Four, four point eight, five, three, this is exciting, six point eight. So there's the curve. Okay, now count squares. One, two, three, four, five, six ish, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight. 
Well, that one might be 29. These two together might be 30. Those, this 31. Those might make 32. And then maybe 30, so maybe 33 squares-ish. So then I could run around the class, how many squares did you get? How many did you get? And how many did you That's a good answer. Well done. <laughs> Without being sarcastic, okay? Well done, class. I am very proud of you. Oh, I don't sound like that when I talk to grade eight. <laughs> could you see me doing that, though? Yeah, I could see my, yeah. I don't think I'd be that bad, though. Yeah, I, I, well, you know what? Grade eights are fine. It's grade sevens. They don't, they don't even have an understand. They don't even have an understanding of what sarcasm is. Grade sevens? Oh, sorry, I was the eight. Sorry. <laughs> Zero, eight, one. Seven point two, three. That was tragic, wasn't it? Okay, so I'm going to draw the shape again. What? Okay, so you draw the curve again. Now, it says break the region into three rectangles, three subintervals. So we're going to start at zero and we're going to go to six using three subintervals. How many, what's the width of the rectangle is going to be? Two. So the, obvious, the obvious question is, is, well, why is it two? Six minus zero divided by three is two. That's, so why am I doing that? I'm trying to hint that in the future, we might be starting at 53 and going to 94, and I want you to break into the three subintervals. Because we're lazy and we only want to do three area calculation. Six is more accurate. 12 is better. 24 is better than that. 96, 96 is probably better than that. But that's just crazy talk if you're going to do that many by hand. Okay. So, so three rectangles. So, rectangle one, I don't know, rectangle one, rectangle two, and rectangle three. So, we are going to use left sum. So what we're going to use, we're going to look at the rectangle one and we're going to use, the, there's two endpoints on this rectangle. There's this one and there's that one. But we're going to use the left dot to define the rectangle. So it's got a length of two and a width of eight. Length of two and a width of eight. Rectangle two goes all the way up to here and goes across and goes down. It's got a length of two and a width of 
I'm interchanging length and width. It really doesn't matter. Yeah, it does. No, it doesn't. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven point two. And then the last one has a length of two and a width of one, two, three, four, four point eight. Don't use the squares, use your table of values to find the numbers, it's more accurate, right? So you multiply that out, 16 plus 14.4 plus 9.6, oh, I don't know, 30, 30.4, 30 31, 40, hopefully that's right, 10, 20, 30, 40, yeah, I think it's right. Okay, so that's the left sum. Now, is that an overestimate or an underestimate? Overestimate. Why? Because the curve is, the rectangle, all the rectangles are above the blue line at all points. Okay, right sum. Now, I don't know where you, if you guys can flip back and forth. No, it's good. All good pagination again. Pagination. The nice thing for me is I can I can erase curves and go over top. So now instead of using the left endpoints, we're going to use the right endpoints. To define our rectangles. So it's got a length of two and a width of seven point I think it's seven point two. Yeah. The next one's got a length of two and a width of four point eight. And the last one, no. And the last one has a width of 2 and a length of 0.8. No, it's just, it, 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 you can average them, but averages of averages, sometimes you've got to be very careful. We don't, we don't average averages. 14.4 plus 9.6 plus 1.6 equals oh, 23, 24, 25.6. No. No. Don't. Just don't. Bad. Don't. Sure, but we don't do that. Okay, trap. Trap. Sure, but we never do it. So. Trapezoid approximation. So what you need to do is you need to see each of those rectangles or each of those shapes as trapezoid. So I'm just going to draw little versions. There's three little versions of they all have a width of two or a height of two. It's just the numbers. You might even notice what's happening with the numbers. The first one's eight. And is it 7.2 in the table? 8, 7.2. The next one's and 4. And then the latter trapezoid 4.8 and 0.6. This is kind of the averaging one. Or 0.8, sorry, yeah. So the calculation you're going to do here is one half eight plus seven point two times two plus one half eight plus seven point oops. One half of seven point two plus four point eight times two, and then a half of four point eight times point eight 
times its height to plus, yeah, sorry. I don't know what you get for those. You have to use your calculator for that. They cancel, so yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but don't. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, so trapezoids. Harder? Not really. A little bit more calculation intensive, potentially? Yeah. Yeah. If you have to do it old school, trapezoid is the best way, it's the most accurate one. Okay. And then midpoint, because we want to add a little bit more funness to the mix. The midpoint, what you're going to do is you're going to find the middle of each of these rectangles, the middle of each of these rectangles. The middle on that one is right there. It's got a length of 2 and a width of 7.8. The width of 2 and a length of 6.2. And the last one is a width of 2 and a length of 3. So 2 times 7.8 plus 2 times 6.2 plus 2 times 3. So which one looks most accurate? Well, trapezoid. Do you want to know what the answer is exactly? Yeah? Or do you care? I used it. Find the antiderivative from 0 to 6. Yeah. 33.6 is the exact-ish answer. Okay. Okay, so practical application. Yeah, cardiac output. The number of liters of blood in your heart pumps in a fixed interval is called your cardiac output. For a person at rest, the rate might be 5 or 6 liters per minute. During strenuous exercise, the rate might be as high as 30 liters per minute. One technique to measure this is to inject a dye into the main vein near the heart. The main vein near the heart. The dye is drawn into the right side of the heart, pumped through the lungs and outside the left side of the heart into the aorta, where the concentration can be measured every few seconds as the blood flows past. The data below shows the response of a healthy resting patient to an injection of 5.6 milligrams of dye. Flip the page. A little history story lesson here. So, draw a rough graph of, di of the dye concentration in milligrams per liter as a function of time in seconds. To obtain the cardiac output, we can divide the number of milligrams of dye by the area under the curve. So there's the old calculation. I don't know. J seconds. 579J, 13, 15, 17. I don't know. J, 11, 10, 20, 12. You know, important ones. So we are going to draw a curve. So we're going to start at... You guys can do this. 
It's going up by two, is it not? Five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen, fifteen. This is fun. There are two twenty seven. Oh, there are. Oh. Okay, anyways. So we're going to make a table. The highest it goes up is 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So at 5, we're at 0. At 7, we're at 3.8. 1, 2, 3.8. 9, we're at 8. At 11, we're at 6.1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. One. Oops. Ah, uh, thirteen. We're at three point six. One, two, three. One hundred and six. Fifteen. We're at two point three. One, two point three. Seventeen. One point four five. This is fun. Not really. 17, we've done. 19, we're at 0.91. 21, we're at 0.5. 23, we're at 0.36. 24, we're at 0.5. 26. So what we're asking you to do is to find the area under that curve. And we're going to do how many subintervals? 13. So your text calls the left sum LRAM and the right sum LRAM. Okay, so what are we going to do? We're going to do LRAM or LRAM? Oh, or RAM. So the right endpoints. 13 subintervals. So what we need to do is to figure out what the width of each subinterval is. So we're going to go 31 minus 5 is uh, 26. Divide by the number of subintervals. intervals. We need 13 of them. Uh, 2. So each width of 2 will create a rectangle. Yeah. So but we didn't know that. Okay. So it says RAM. So we're going to need a whole bunch of area calculations. So the area, it's going to just be length times width plus length times width plus length times width plus length times width plus length times width. Length times width. Um, so we're going to use RAM. So I'm going to draw the first rectangle. It starts, it's that one. You notice I'm not using the 5. The 5 would be used for LRAM, or the left area calculation. So all I'm really asking kids to do is to go 3.8 times 2 plus 5.8 ah, times 2 plus 6.1 times 2 plus 3.6 times 2 3.6 times 2 plus 2.3 times 2 1.45 times 2 plus 0 0.91 times 2 plus 0 0.57 times 2 plus 0 0.36 times 2 plus 0 0.23 times 2 plus 0 0.14 times 2 plus 
0 0.09 times 2. Oh, wait, the last one. 0 times 2. Okay, so get your calculators out. Start. 3.8. Why would I? Do? You notice they're all multiplied by 2? Why don't you add them all up and times it by 2 then? Like factor the 2 out and actually think. So 3.8 plus 8 plus Be silly plus zero, haha. Uh -huh. Fifty-five point one. So fifty-five point one. Um, so fifty-five point. So it's 5.6, sorry, milligrams of dye divided by units of area under the curve. We gave someone 5.6 milligrams of dye and we found the area under the curve to be 55.1 milligrams per liter equals milligrams of dye 5.6 divided by We're just converting, we're just trying to figure out how much blood our heart's pumping in a minute. So we're going to go 5.6 divided by 55.1 times 60. Our heart pumps 6.09 liters per minute. What? just 6.09 liters per minute. Now, is that good? Is that bad? I leave that up to the medical professionals. But at least you now know how much blood's coming through the person's heart. You could take that over to the doctor and say, doctor, do we have a blood problem? Is there a problem with the amount of blood that the person's heart is pumping? Well, per, yeah, you just because it's not in, this is per second, right? Well, okay, so to make this accurate, to make this perfectly accurate, you're never going to be perfectly accurate, but there's a technique in, in mathematics that we call regression that we would actually put this data into our curve, into our calculator, and it will create this curve. And then we, to, to be more accurate, we would use our calculator, we would go second trace seven, where do we start, five, where do we finish, 31, find the area. But this is just supposed to be a, a rough guesstimate of, of how much blood our heart is pumping. It's not going to be it's not going to be accurate anyway. I mean, the only way to really measure it is is <laughs> cut the person's heart open, um, want, <laughs> and, and pour the blood into a measuring cup as it comes through the aorta. And after sixty seconds, you stop and go, "Oh, that's enough." And you go, wow, that's pretty good. And then you put it back in. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> right? Okay. So, that takes us to the end of integration day six, 5.1. We're going to do another day of this tomorrow just because I want to make sure everybody's cool, cool with that. Tomorrow morning. So what are we working on? We have, we can